Hey, good afternoon, Team McAuliffe. Sorry I'm a little late to the read aloud. I had uh, a couple things to do. And uh, it's not my usual beach setting with bright sunny temps. It's a little rainy, a little sad, a little dreary out there. Um, hope everybody's staying safe out there. Hope you enjoy the book reads. Um, tune in for more each day, every day. Miss you guys. Hope you're all well. The Serious Goose, written and illustrated by Jimmy Kimball. This is a serious goose. There's nothing silly about this goose. Do not even try to be silly around this goose. This goose will not smile at all. Not even if you put a chicken on her head, nothing. Even if you were to dress this goose as a moose, zilch. Even if you order a pizza topped with delicious snails, no smile. This goose means business. Serious business. No one can make this goose smile. Is that you say? You think you can do it? Ha! You think you can make this goose smile? There's no way. There is no way you can make this goose smile. No one can. This is a no smiling goose. Go right ahead, look in the mirror and give it a shot. Make funny faces, let's see what you've got. Stick out your tongue and let your ears wiggle. Act like a monkey, this goose shall not giggle. Cluck like a chicken, moo like a cow. Be doofy, be goofy, any way you know how. However you do it, it won't be enough. This goose isn't silly, this goose is too tough. See, I hate to say I told you so, but this is exactly what I knew would happen. Good try though, you are very funny. Most geese would have laughed so hard, eggs would be coming out. But not this goose. This goose will never, ever. Uh oh, what is this? Something is happening to this goose? No, this can't be. Stop being so silly. This is a serious goose. Do not make this goose smile. Oh no, this is terrible. By the power vested in me, by the order of serious geese and gooses, I hereby command you to up. I'm using this goose. Wow, the goose is really giggling. This is not such a serious goose after all. In fact, this seems to be a silly goose, thanks to you. You are a silly kid. You'll be hearing from my attorneys. The end. Hey, what's up? Bringing you your second book here, How I Met Your Monster, written by Amanda Knoll, illustrated by Howard McWilliams. Enjoy the read. One night, I reached under my bed for my truck. I found this note instead. Monsters, meet here for final test. Z. Ha! Huh. My parents were obviously trying to trick me into staying in bed. I didn't believe in monsters. So I crumpled the paper, grabbed my truck, and zipped over to my garage. I heard some cracking and rumbling, but I wasn't scared. Our house always made noises that night. But then a voice under the bed scolded, Stop that stomach rumbling. The child will hear you. Voices? Stomach rumbling? If this was part of my parents' trick, it was pretty cool. I peered into the inky blackness. Five pairs of eyes blinked back. See? Now he knows we're here, the voice sighed. 
One of you has broken monster rule number one. Maintain the element of surprise. This is no trick, I thought. There are monsters under my bed. A long necked yellow monster slid out, followed by four little monsters. Rule number two, the yellow one instructed, never block the bed. All of you, scoot over. Hey, I realize that one must be the teacher. I sat up straight, mesmerized by the monster parade, shuffling across my bedroom. That's better, the teacher monster said. Access to the bed is clear. Now who knows rule number three? The purple monster teetered on his tiptoes and gurgled, get the child into bed. That's correct, Genghis. And how would you do this? Well, Mr. Z, I would roar my scariest roar. All right, give it a go. Genghis took a deep breath, opened his mouths, and let out a tiny burp. Stomach rumbling would have been a better choice of getting me into bed than that tiny little noise. I laughed. The child is right, said Mr. Z, shaking his head. That was not sufficiently scary. Genghis, I'm sorry. You're not the best monster for this child. There was some creaking as Genghis sunk beneath the bed. Before I could investigate where Genghis had gone, Mr. Z asked, Now, who wants to try to get this child into bed? The orange monster looked at the ceiling and the red monster looked at the floor. Only the green one looked at me. First, he stared at my toes and started drooling. Then he took a step toward me and I heard that grumbling noise again. I sprang into bed so he couldn't get my feet. Mr. Z blinked. Very unconventional, Gabe. Your stomach gurgles seem to be what this child needs. What I needed was to make sure this little Gabe monster didn't eat my toes. You three, the child is now in bed, said Mr. Z. As every monster knows, the ultimate objective is rule number four. Who can tell me what that is? The orange monster bounced and squeaked. Keep the child in bed until it falls asleep. Correct, Morgan. And how would you accomplish that? Shadow puppets. Shadow puppets! She squeaked again. Gabe whistled through his nose and sneered. But Mr. Z said, interesting idea. Try it. Morgan hopped onto my night table and flailed her arms near my lamp. Silly shadows blobbed onto the wall and a fluffy fur tickled my nose. Ah, uh, choo! Morgan, stop at once, Mr. Z ordered. You're supposed to scare him, not make him sneeze. I'm sorry, but you're not a match either. Morgan's arms flopped to her side and she scuttled under my bed. There was some creaking, excuse me, there was some more creaking and Morgan was gone. After all that sneezing, I really needed a tissue. Suddenly, a huge shadow of uncut claws loomed across my room. Awesome, I thought. And kind of scary. I froze in place. Powerful performance, Gabe, said Mr. Z. But do either of you see a problem? Oh, I know, chirped the red monster. The child is out of bed again. Correct, Abigail, Mr. Z continued and one of you must get him back in. Let's revisit rule number one, maintain the element of surprise. All at once, poof, the monsters vanished. Then I heard more rumbling. Were they hiding in my closet making noises to scare me? Ha, no, it was only my stomach grumbling. All this excitement was making me hungry. I tiptoed past the closet and peeked out the door. So far, so good. No monsters. Then I stepped over the squeaky stair and sneaked down to the kitchen. As I reached into the pantry, I heard some chattering behind me. I sure hoped it wasn't toe-loving Gabe.
I yanked open the fridge. Ha! It wasn't Gabe. It was the red monster shivering on the shelf. Found you, I laughed. Nice try, Abigail, said Mr. Z. But this isn't working. You're not the right monster for this child. But Mr. Z, she whined. It's not my fault he's not scared of me. I'm sorry, Abigail. Let's go. Abigail clomped behind Mr. Z. When I heard the creaking, I knew she was gone. I grabbed some crackers and headed upstairs, wondering if Gabe was gone too. I munched all the way down the hall, then into the bathroom to brush my teeth again. When I opened the door a minute later, Gabe was definitely not gone. He was right there, and he was huge. Ah! I charged into my room and slammed the door. When I leaped into bed, I knew my toes were safe. Phew! I was surprised to hear breathing under my bed, rugged breathing and stomach rumbling. Hey, kid, Gabe growled. Good to see you. I pulled my covers up tight. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening with an ominous puddle of drool. I peeked over the edge of my bed, green ooze. Then the bed quivered as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. Well, this looks quite promising, Mr. Z noted. Gabe loomed over my bed and began sharpening his uncut claws on my bedpost. Uh, how'd you get so big? I gasped. Rule number five, my friend, he explained. People food makes monsters grow. So thanks for the crackers. Got any toes I can munch? I scrunched in my feet so Gabe couldn't get them. This was way better than playing with trucks. The bed. Gabe dove for it. His soft, comforting snorts filled the room as he snuffled the toy. I shivered. Kid, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. No other monster can scare me like you, I giggled. Gabe was a monster for me. His snorts and ooze were perfect. I yawned, then shivered again. I was asleep in no time.